back again. Here he is. Yeah, you showed me that. take the pictures of me are you recording my voice at the same time you have given me the opportunity to focus on elements in my life as I think about growing up in Tacoma is one, and attending, and then going to Olympia High School, and living in Olympia, is two. Coming back to Tacoma and attending the University of Puget Sound, three. Meeting this wonderful guy, Bill Wilbert. I was born and raised in Tacoma, Washington. My dad was city controller of Tacoma. I could see the bay, commencement bay, outside of the living room windows. I walked to grade school and elementary school, middle school, Mason. And then at the last end of uh, it was about in 1941, my dad was appointed state director of licenses by Governor Langley. And the whole family moved to Olympia. I was the only member of my family that didn't get to graduate from Stadium High School in Tacoma. Even my mother graduated from Stadium High School. Well, I had a new experience in my life. At Mason Junior High School, I was a big shot in the ninth grade. But when I went to Olympia High School, I found myself in the ninth freshman year of ninth grade. I was a no one at all. I had to make new friends. I did that. We lived just within a block of the school. 
Olympia High School, William Winlock Miller High School was its real name. There was a dental office right in back of my home and I was able to find a part-time job there cleaning the uh, equipment for the dentist and I earned a little bit of money while I was in high school. Then when the, that ended and, and my dad uh, was no longer state director of licenses, the whole family moved back to Tacoma. That was a little hard to do. However, the College of Puget Sound, which is now called the University of Puget Sound, is right behind, uh, is within a mile of my home. And I, I enrolled at the College of Puget Sound as a freshman. There were only about 450 students there, and most of them were women. But then in December of that year, the war ended, World War II ended, and our campus was flooded with 1,000 veterans coming back for their education. Well, we girls didn't know what the veterans were married and which ones weren't, but we managed to deal with that situation. Then one day, I walked into my sorority room, and there living, laying on the Davenport was this guy with his feet up on the arm of the Davenport. And he looked at me and he said, you're Gretchen Swayze, aren't you? I said, yes. He said, I took you for a rowboat ride when you were eight years old. And then it dawned on me that his family had rented a home for a couple of weeks at Harbor Heights on Vashon Island. And we had a summer home on Vashon Island and I spent every summer of my childhood on the bay. On this, on this beach, picking up agates and shells and swimming in the salt water and fishing. And this young man entered, and my grandfather had built that rowboat. My grandfather was a carpenter. And the young man invited me to sit with him in the rowboat. Would I like to go for a ride? Oh, yes. So I climbed in with him and found out his name was Bill Wilbert. Oh, interesting. Now that was when I was eight years old. Let's come back up to now when I'm in college and I have met this guy on the Davenport and lo and behold, it was Bill Wilbert. Well, the next four years, I uh, stayed at the College of Puget Sound and the year I graduated was in 49. And that's when they changed the name of College of Puget Sound back to the University of Puget Sound. So when, they, when Bill came back with the veterans early, four years earlier, Bill wanted to be a doctor, but so did all the other veterans who came into school.
And that happened to be the time, because I believe in miracles and I believe in doors and opportunity opening all the time, that I, I introduced him, I introduced Bill to Dr. Kornmesser, who is the father of my best friend at Olympia High School. Dr. Kornmesser was a doctor of optometry, and he suggested to Bill, why don't you become an optometrist? So Bill thought about that, and lo and behold, he went down to Forest Grove, Oregon, where Pacific University is located, where the School of Optometry is there, and he decided to enroll there. From School of Optometry, there were only two women in this class. Betty and Patty. All the rest were men. When was that? 1951. He eventually graduated from Pacific University with a Doctor of Optometry degree and came back and worked part-time with Dr. Hart in Tacoma. But he also liked Puget Sound. Well, we weren't married yet. We uh, were thinking about it, but she still had school. And my sister and brother-in-law, Shirley Swayze Dirth, and her husband, her new husband, Harry, had met at Columbia University in New York City. And they invited me to go back with them to finish, as they finished their senior year, after they had come to Tacoma to be married. And I had the most wonderful ride on a train all the way across America. I think we got on in Spokane and went from Spokane to New York City. It took two days. We stayed overnight in Chicago and then got back on the train and finished the ride to New York City. And there I was able to get a job in a teacher's college bookstore. So I worked at, in New York City for a year, saw every Broadway shore show, sat in the second balcony, of course, because that was a $2 price. And I was, I'd been a theater major in college. So this really interested me. I lived at 100 Morningside Drive. Isn't that a wonderful address? And I walked to Columbia University Teachers College bookstore. That was a glorious year of my life, living in New York City. Then when we came home, Bill and I were ready to plan to get married. We'd known each other for four years, gone together for four years, off and on. And he wanted to have an optometry practice in Gig Harbor. Wow. So we came out and looked around and we loved it. There were two doc medical doctors who had room in their medical building for Bill Wilbert to have his office, Doctor of Optometry office. 
Dr. Bogue and Dr. Begins with an L. I can't quite remember the name. And Bill had a big dream, two dreams. One, he wanted to have a practice of his own. And worked with Dr. Waller to build a professional building right by the post office in downtown Gig Harbor. Then Bill and I were married, and within four years, I had given birth to three children. Talk about a busy life. Wow. Cindy, the first one, was born exactly nine months after the day Bill and I were married, December 27th. And we uh, had purchased a little home in Fircrest. And with those three babies, we soon outgrew that home. And it was at that time that Bill and I decided we wanted to have a home on the beach. So we came out, he came out, looked for beach homes, and we found one, well, he found one on Wallacha Bay. And when I went out to look at it, I opened that first door and saw the wind, the water through those windows in the living room. And I said, honey, this is it. We got to have this. And we did. You won't believe we sold our house in Fircrest for $10,000. And we bought that one and a half acres of water, of medium, medium bay waterfront for $80,000, I think. We moved in, remodeled during the years. Kind of uh, do it yourself, pay as you go. Bill liked to do the repairs, remodels, and things. And I have a picture of that over here on the table. The children all went to Artendale School, or Harbor Heights, I don't know. And I thought I wanted to go back to college and get an early childhood education degree, which is what I did when Marty was th in the third grade. I kind of wanted to teach the third grade. But that's when Doris Schubner came to see me. She was a friend of mine who lived in Gig Harbor. And she was in charge of the, the kindergarten programs for the Tacoma School District. And she said, Gretchen, we really need kindergarten teachers. Oh, because I believe in doors of opportunity opening. 
I said, well, what's available? She said, there's one at Madison School, which is right near the Tacoma Dome, or Tacoma, Tacoma Mall, excuse me. And I took the job. What I discovered in that job was I had between 20 and five children, five-year-olds, in kindergarten. We had a 40% turnover in the class every year because by the mall, it was in a high rental district and there were a lot of military people coming and going. And it was, it was not fun. And one day, one of the boys picked up my little hamster, toy hamster, little, little animal, and squeezed him to death. And I thought, oh, oh dear. I started to cry. The next day, Doris Humor came and took over my class. And I kept so I went back to tea and I kept teaching. Within the next couple of weeks, I had a visitor, Max Snyder from the Tacoma School District School Board. He came to visit my class. <coughs> Excuse me. And I said, and he said, uh, we really need a kindergarten program for the Peninsula School District. Would you come out and put it together for us? And the Peninsula School District didn't have a kindergarten program. And I thought, oh, door of opportunity, miracle. Thank you. I said, okay, Max, I will do it. I'll finish my semester here at Madison School. And then I will come out and begin to put up the, a kindergarten program for the Peninsula School District. And we uh, did put together the kindergarten program. I and started teaching I started teaching in 67, 1967, in the Peninsula School District, Hartendale School. I had required only between 15 and 20 students in each class. And what was your name? Gretchen Wilbert. I had a maiden name of Swayze. That's your Swayze Wilbur. Yeah, but she's been the uh, kindergarten teacher for a lot of us here in the harbor. Really? Mm -hmm. My brother and me. <laughs> what did you learn in kindergarten? Yeah, I was. I, I learned nap time, my ABCs, my numbers. <laughs> Had to listen. Yeah, and you were keeper of the chair once in a while, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Then in 1990, no, no, 88, Ardendale School needed a remodel. And they were asking all the teachers to move out of Ardendale School into another school for the following classroom. No way was I going to move all that kindergarten equipment that I had into another school, and I thought I was 60 years old. Okay, time to require, time to retire, which I did. And that's when Bill and I then took our, took a trip. Down to New Orleans, because that's where Bill was stationed when he was in the Merchant Marine. He was there for a while. And I'd never seen America. <laughs> and we traveled in saw the world, or in America. That was marvelous. 
Then when we came back, Bill was, uh, he was active in the church with me. He had been a Methodist his whole life, and I too. And he was in some kind of in office, some kind of office in the church, I think treasurer. And one day he came home and he was so pissed off with the politics in the church. Oh, he was feeling terrible and I was feeling bad for him. But that's when he picked up Alliance Club magazine and read about volunteer optometric service to humanity and read about it. He made the phone call to the main group in Ohio and for the next 24 years Bill Wilbert went on 24 missions to third world countries taking used eyeglasses that were put together and categorized by the Gig Harbor Lions Club. In each one of our children and grandchildren, each one of our children were able to go with Bill into one of these countries and help put the eyeglasses on these people. And I remember when they did, because most of these people in third world countries that needed glasses were the women. They did a lot of hand work and they began to lose their focus. But when we put glasses on them, I remember I put them on. They'd look around because they'd never seen anything like this. They'd never seen their even family members. And we enjoyed that. And we sent them away with a pair of eyeglasses that they could see through in order to do their handwork their needlepoint, their knitting. It was a delight. And Bill went for the 24 years and I was able to go in for 16 of those for a two week mission. Ah, and that was the best part. One of the good parts of our life. I have more things too, but I'll talk of them about them later. Happy to share another chapter in my life. I had just retired from teaching kindergarten, and Bill and I had, my husband had plans to travel some. And this group came to me and knocked on my door and said, Gretchen, you did you run for mayor? I said, but I'm retired. They said, that's why you can run for mayor. 
Oh, I said, try and find someone else. Please. And I thought about it for a minute or two and thought, well, if you can't find anyone else, why Bill and I will come home a year a day early and I'll go down and file. Which is what we did. I did. If people want me, fine. If they don't want me, that's fine, okay. Bill and I did tr do travel that summer and I thought about what would it take to be the mayor of Cake Harbor? First of all, I needed to look around the city. Third, to listen to what the people had to say. Look, listen, and learn. Learn how to make the things happen that the people wanted to have happen. And what those things were were parks. And they loved walking the sidewalks of Big Harbor. And while I was mayor, then, the one thing we did try and do was to save and put into the legal aspect of our work, to save the natural vegetation, to save, and in Gig Harbor, to save clumps of natural vegetation. They protect each other. Trees protect each other from the wind in clumps of natural vegetation. And if you look around the city now as you drive through, you will see clumps of natural vegetation. Trees grow old too. Sometimes they do come down by themselves. But usually they are staying there in their position and thoroughly enjoying what they are doing. This natural vegetation is history for Gig Harbor. History for the people. Help, I've spent my life helping to solve problems and bring forth positive solutions, and God has given me another challenge. Our country is in trouble. 
due to our troubled teenagers stealing, robbing, running away, dropping out of school, the domestic violence, drinking, fighting, swearing, with their only friends who were gang members. And why, we ask? I believe it is totally due to the lack of proper parenting. You guessed it, the, the important research tells us a child earns 50% of all they learn in their lifetime in the first six years of life. If all they hear is arguing and fighting at home, and that, then that's what they learn to do. No wonder our teachers in schools are faced with classroom behavior problems. Law enforcement with our, within our communities has become a number one cost to be paid for by our tax, with our tax dollars. And I thought, how can this problem be solved? My mother had served on the board of the YWCA in Tacoma. That was a wonderful place for girls. People were moving into Gig Harbor and saying, where's your senior center? We said, we don't have one. What? You don't have a senior center? And at the same time, I was invited to go to the middle schools to speak about government. And at the end of my talk, I would say, what should we be doing in Gig Harbor? And the children would say on and on, there's nothing for us to do after school. And that was true, unless they were in sports. Then one day at the Lions Club lunch, I heard the speaker, Gary Oswald, speak about the importance of the boys club to him as he was growing up in Pennsylvania. Well, I'd never been to the boys club and now it's called the boys and girls club. So I invited myself and went to the one in Tacoma on Pearl, just off Pearl Street. And guess what? I discovered they have the very same things that the senior centers have, that I have been able to see. And I finally got the idea, Gary, why couldn't we join, uh, combine the two? a Boys and Girls Club with a senior center, and that way we could solve the problems of most of our children and our adults in our community. He said to me, we've never done that. Oh dear God, okay. I got the idea. Research it for us, would you? And he did. And he researched it. And Lynn and found in Sweet Home, Oregon. Lynn McAdams, who is president of the Gig Harbor Lions Club. Stan Godier of AARP and I then drove to Sweet Home, Oregon, toured the facility, and brought back the plan. And that's what we put together. 
with many members of this community. And it's finally opened. It is established just behind Geek Harbor High School and Henderson Bay High School. definitely want to do that. Oh yeah, that's a good place to start getting to know people. Socially, I want sure. that and being one, it's nice to be around people when you Of eat. course, yeah, yeah. And it's always a good lunch. to celebrate and honor the fishing families and the boat building that they have done in Gig Harbor. With this statue, we raised a lot of money in this community, but we were not able to raise enough at that time until and the city of Creek Harbor obtained Ansich Park, a waterfront park, probably to be used by our commercial fishing people, but also a walking beach. So people could be down and walk on the beach. And that could also be the place for the location of this statue to honor our fishing families. Thank you. That dream has yet to be accomplished. I served as mayor between 1990 and 2005. Oh, it was uh, a joy and a challenge being mayor of Gig Harbor. And 
then the people came to me, I, I mean, I served four terms. Four four-year terms. And the folks came to me and said, you need to run again. Oh, but I'm retired. Dear God, find someone to take my place. And the day before filing ended, Chuck Hunter came and knocked on my door and said, I will carry on your vision. I was pleased. Chuck Hunter did that, and he served for eight years, two terms. He was a builder, contractor, so he knew all of those things that need to happen in Gig Harbor, things that I was not particularly aware of. Now. Grandview Forest Park is right next to the new city hall. We call it the Civic Center. There's beautiful walking trails between through that park. Scansy Brothers Park is right next to Jerisich Dock. not to be built so close together that people couldn't enjoy the view corridor looking out onto Gig Harbor Bay as they walked the harbor. And I'm delighted now that I see many men walking with children, fathers, mothers, And they're learning about the harbor. They're looking, listening, and learning, just as I did through my life. I have lived 86 years. Thank you, God. You opened the doors of opportunity for me, and you still are doing it for members of our community. As I look at that view climb, the Finholm view climb, the stairway, that some of the children from school helped us build. This is One of my main projects, working with the Gig Harbor Lions Club. And every brick that you see 
was purchased by a family of the harbor. That's okay. My family donated. can remember the vision, the view, the beauty that was created for us, and that we as public servants will continue to maintain this wonderful community. Many, many, many years ago, Captain Wilkes was touring Puget Sound. Captain said, what is that little tiny opening there? Go check it out. his charting of Puget Sound did put the name of Gig Harbor on. Called it Gig Harbor because it was a small little harbor. And he called the little rowboat that came in to take a look at the harbor his gig. And this is the story. Did you know that a small rowboat was called a gig? I learned that myself. I want to thank you all. If you have ideas, keep them coming. Because the creative people in our area will make it happen. Thank you. We'll talk about more another day. I'm glad we were at your table. Yeah, yeah, I am too. See you later. You don't mind missing the ice cream? Yeah! No. 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 <laughs> okay. You can never miss ice cream. I'm taking my pictures of that. Oh, really? He's a filmmaker preserving memories. Lots of cases I'm withdrawing more and that's but not sure when. Okay.
many a place I have come to embrace in this beautiful world that we share. But there's one I love best, far above all the rest. Here's a song that will take you some of the students that I 